So today's topic is temporomandibular joint imaging. So it's a relatively small topic and uh, but it will be routinely encountered uh, when we are doing either an MR or a CT imaging and it is challenging because not everybody uh, will do a temporomandibular joint imaging. Right? So what are the different modalities for which we can use to see a TMJ? First of all is um, your radiographs. So what is the advantage of radiographs? They are simple to do. They are readily available. Right? What can they show us? They can show us the bony outlines. We will see each of them in detail again. Right? And next is that uh, they have an uh, advantage of being dynamic. Right? We can do an x-ray with, with the TMJ in a certain position. And which would mean either a closed jaw or an open jaw. We will talk about its biomechanics in a while. Right? But again, we must remember that these use ionizing radiations. Okay. Cone beam CT or helical CT, they're two different kinds of CT. So in cone beam CT, you have a flat panel detector, which you will rotate around and collect a cone shape of X-ray beam, right? It has a little, um, it's, it will have lesser resolution as compared to a helical CT. But still, it is quite commonly used in the um, dental uh, setups. Helical CT is our normal spiral CT. Again, all the three are really good to look at bones. Right? They all have ionizing radiation. Right? And out of these, only the radiographs remain dynamic. Okay? Right? Now... What is, uh, so what is the gold standard to look at a temporomandibular joint? Well, the gold standard would here be an MR. Why will it be a gold standard to look at it? So it is a gold standard because first of all, it will tell us about the soft tissue. Right? Especially joint related soft tissues, we will see further. Anyways, we can appreciate the effusions, synoviums better. Next, it is also dynamic. Right? It is also dynamic. So now there are two things which are dynamic here. <laughs> One is radiographs and the other is an MR imaging. So in MR imaging, like we had once seen while discussing cardiac imaging that we can do a cine, we can also do dynamic imaging of the temporomandibular joint. Now there is an upcoming role which has been described for ultrasound, right? The only thing about ultrasound which is common for both MR and ultrasound is that it does not have any radiation exposure. Ultrasound is also better to look at effusions. It can also help us to guide our interventions. Right? If we want to do a diagnostic tap or we want to give a therapeutic injection, these all things can be done in ultrasound guidance. So we've understood the modalities which we have. We understood the bones and the soft tissues to be seen. So this is a gingylo-arthrodial joint. Just a fancy word. It just means it has a hinge movement as well as a translational movement. So this is the mandible. This is your temporal bone. I 
i hope everybody can well uh, see this so in this you have the condyle of the mandible and you have the neck right <clears throat> this is the fossa right temporomandibular fossa this is the articular eminence and this is the muscle so for any joint what happens is you have bones so here the joint is formed between the temporal bone and the mandible mandible specifically only the condyle right it has it's it has a globular outline right this is where the round curved movement is going to be and the fossa of the temporal bone is forming the cup in which this will rotate so what would translation mean translation would mean suppose this is the movement right so if we are doing a hinge like movement right we are going to move it down and up right we normally do that when we open and close our mouth so this is the hinge movement next we can translate a little bit also translation means that we move a little forward and backward also right so we can do a translational movement at this also that is why it has these two components so once we've understood that there are two bones right these are forming the joint now we need to have something which is going to uh, allow this movement to go well so there is going to be a synovial lining okay because this is a synovial joint right next we need something which is going to act like a shock absorber and which is this intraarticular disc so this is really very very important here this disc is actually made up of a fibrocartilaginous uh, type right rather usually what happens is we find hyaline cartilage but here we find a fibrocartilaginous disc this disc is actually dividing the joint into a superior part and an inferior part so these are the two compartments which have been divided by this disc now let us look at this disc a little more closely so what happens is that this disc has an intermediate part second so it has an intermediate part it has a thick anterior part and a thick posterior part right so anterior intermediate and the posterior part so this is the thin part and now you can see that it's more like a bow tie kind of a thing right so this is like a biconcave disc shape right this is how a normal disc is supposed to look like next we must remember that there are some uh, posterior attachments which will connect it to the joints respectively so that this disc also needs stabilization right so posteriorly it is going to get attached to the bones and anteriorly it is going to get attached by some dynamic stabilizers which are like the muscles so here this is the lateral pterygoid muscle and this will be the inferior belly and this is going to be the superior belly so now we have understood the components of this joint we've understood the bones the movement which is going to happen we have understood that it has its own disc in between which is acting like a shock absorber and is kind of dividing this synovial joint into two compartments so